uh, looking at a message series at different uh, phrases or ideas uh, that Christians often say but aren't entirely true. Uh, and we've talked about uh, ways that we can truly relate to God. And uh, the first one was that, that God would never give you anything you can't handle and how that's not true, that we all face things that we can't handle on our own. And that's when we need to look to God and, and look to other people uh, to help us along the way. Uh, last week, we looked at the idea that um, we don't often say, but we kind of live, is that God wants me happy, that God wants to give me everything that makes me happy. And we said that God's not concerned necessarily about your happiness, but about your holiness, uh, about your relationship to him. That's what is really important to him. And uh, this morning, uh, as Dolores kind of got us started with the children's moment, we're going to talk about fairness. And uh, this past week, I um, kind of had a flashback to my childhood because I saw two kids. It was here at the church, and they were, there was two kids and one brownie. Okay, and it was right in the middle, and I thought, for sure we're going to have a fight over who gets this brownie, and these two kids are going to go at it, and, uh, you know, they'll divide it up or something, but they, they didn't fight, and I was surprised, but they, one kid said, okay, I'll cut it, and then you get to pick which half you get, and it uh, took me back because that was the rule in our house. Do you all have that rule when you split food that one person cuts and the other person chooses which half they get? Um, because what would happen if you don't make that, it that way? I remember learning it because I was making a big cut that was for me, and my little sister got the little part. Uh, but after I made the cut, mom said, no, 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 the person that doesn't cut gets to choose. So I got the small end. And so I learned quickly the lesson of when you cut things in half, cut them in half. Be as fair as you can, because the person that chooses then uh, will always give you the smaller piece. And so we, we learn at a young age we're told to be fair, Right. And that we want things to be fair. We desire for things to be fair for us and, and to be fair in this world. Uh, but it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, and when we're younger, sometimes it starts out with, you know, we want it to be fair when we play games. We want it to be fair when we cut up the pie. Everyone gets the same amount of, of pie, you know, and, and we want things to be fair like that. As we get older, though, we still have questions of fairness as, as adults. Uh, I've been into some hospital rooms uh, where I've had people say, this isn't fair. Why do I keep having these health issues when other people don't have any issues with their health? Or I've been with folks who have been uh, let go at work, and they said, this isn't fair. I have so much more experience than the person that kept their job. And, and just in general, some people, life isn't fair. You know, I, I'm just trying to make ends meet. And, and this family, they keep buying new cars every year. Uh, we just don't see things as working out uh, to be fair in the world around us. And when my kids, uh, they, I, I hear from them often, that's not fair. Uh, my normal response is, life is not fair. Get used to it, right? So there's your answer. We're done. I'm going to pray. And <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but life just, we want it to be fair, but it doesn't seem to be fair. And so here's the, the real question I've been wrestling with that you all can help me with. I'm going to have you all vote on this. What is more fair? Is it more fair to treat everybody the same, or is it more fair for everyone to get what they deserve? All right, so which one's more fair? You're going to raise your hand for one or the other. I think both are fair. You know, everyone being treated equal, that's fair. No, no special treatment. Everyone gets equal amounts. That, that's fair for everyone to be treated the same. But it's also fair to, to get what you deserve. You know, if we had a quiz and there were 10 questions, it wouldn't be fair if someone who got only two questions right to get the same thing that someone who got 10 questions right, right? The person that got 10 should have a higher score. It's not fair if they have the same score. So I, I see both of those as fair, um, so which one is more fair? Everyone treated equal or everyone gets what they deserve? I'm going to have you raise your hand. All right, who thinks everyone should be treated equal? That's more fair. That's the more fair way to go, okay? Who thinks it's more fair for everyone to get what they deserve? Okay, then uh, all three services, about like 75% think it's you get what you deserve is more fair than everyone being treated equal. Well, I think, you know, I keep wrestling with that because I'm one that I, I lean towards the everyone gets what they deserve is more fair. I get so frustrated when, uh, you know, we have a competition or whatever with the kids and they all get a medal for it, you know, just for showing up. I'm like, that would so frustrate me because I'm like, well, I'm not even going to try if I don't even have to do anything and I still get, a, you know, an award for that. But I'm pretty competitive, so I might try a little bit. Um, but I was thinking, you know, that, like the Olympics, if everybody got a gold medal at the Olympics, I, why would we watch? I mean, why would we really care who won because they're all getting gold medals? At the same time, I thought, what if the Special Olympics did that? What if the Special Olympics only gave a gold medal to the, the winner and everyone else got nothing? We'd think that's unfair, wouldn't we? And so this idea of fairness, it's not just like you can say, here's what's fair, but it depends on the situation and what's going on. And I think there's a deeper question that God would have us ask instead of just saying, well, what is fair? And how do we live out with what is fair? Uh, and, and sometimes as we dig into this too, we, we look to God and say, God, why aren't you fair? 
God, if you're in charge of all these things, shouldn't you be fair? And, and God, shouldn't you make good things happen for good people and make bad things happen for bad people? Shouldn't you be fair, God, if, if you're in charge of all this stuff? That's questions we ask. And, and I want us to look at the, the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, there's a passage here that helped me uh, this week as I thought about what does it mean to, to be fair and to look to God for fairness. Um, and this is from Matthew 5, starting at verse 43. This is Jesus speaking. So Jesus is teaching uh, his disciples and those who have gathered around him. And, and Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to, sh to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the word of God for us this morning. And so Jesus is teaching here, and he says that, what they've been told in the past is to, to love, take care of those that you love, uh, but to hate your enemies. Don't worry about those people you don't like, uh, those people that annoy you, those people you don't get along with. Just don't worry about them. Just, just stay away from them. But he says, but I tell you to love your enemies and to pray for those who, per who persecute you. I think Jesus is trying to encourage us to think about what does it mean to be fair and how we treat uh, the people that we interact with each and every day. And then he says something that's very challenging to me, but it, very uh, powerful for us to remember as well. He said, God causes the sun to shine on the good and the evil, and the rain to come for the righteous and the unrighteous. And so what he says, it doesn't matter if you're, you're good or evil, if you're righteous or unrighteous, the sun will still come up and shine upon you, the, the rains will still come down and, and pour upon you, whether you're, you're good or evil, righteous or unrighteous, um, it's, it's all kind of fair there. Everybody gets treated the same way with the sun and the rain, which also I think could be taken kind of literally, but also um, metaphorically, that the sun is the good and the rain is the bad, that good things happen to the good and the evil. Bad things happen to the righteous and the unrighteous, that, which to me is not fair, is it? But good and bad come to all of us. And that's what Jesus is saying, and, and that's what God says to us, that this world is a place, it's, it's a fallen world, it's a broken world, where good and bad happen to everybody. It's not about necessarily fair things happen to each and every one of us, or good things come to those who deserve it. It's that it happens to everybody, good and bad times. And so the question of us saying, well, what is fair, is not a great question, I don't think, for us to ask. I don't think God's concern is mainly about fairness and, and what is fair. I want to encourage you to, to maybe change the question you ask. Instead of asking, what is fair, ask, what is faithful? What does it look like to be faithful in the midst of this fair or unfair situation that I'm in? As I face, face this situation, how should I be faithful to God? And I think God will often give you different responses depending on the situation. Some situations you may face, um, it may be faithful for you just to press on just to keep on going, just, just keep on working and, and just be faithful to God and, and know that, you know, unfair things happen and I'm just going to push through. I'm going to be faithful to God and, and God will help me through this difficult time that I'm in. I think there will be times uh, when unfair things happen to you that God just wants you to be faithful and just press on. But I think there will be other times that something unfair will happen and God wants you not just to press on but to speak up, to call out this is unfair or I would say more this is unjust. Uh, the, there's an issue of justice here that needs to be addressed, and we need to speak up. That's what the, the faithful call in that situation would be, is to speak up and to, to point out how unfair it is. I think God called... Did I just die? There we go. Uh, so God calls us, depending on the situation, that we should do different things. As I looked at the statistics on this Compassion International, did you all see the, the statistic? Today, 19,000 children will die because of poverty. Today, 19,000 children will die because of poverty. That's not fair, is it? That's not fair. Just because they were born probably in another country compared to being born in Williamsburg, Iowa, a child will die because of poverty? It's not fair. And a lot of times we start looking to God and say, God, why, why is that happening? That's unfair. And I think a lot of times we, we look to God for these things we think are unfair. And I wonder if we should not be looking at ourselves. Have I allowed this unfair thing to happen? I mean, there's enough food in this world to feed everybody. 
And yet, what did Roger say? Five million people don't have enough food? Well, that's not God's fault necessarily. That's, that's our fault. Because we're not able to, to get the food to them and, and make sure that they have it. And so instead of us keep looking to God for solving these issues of unfairness, what if we look to ourselves and say, what does it look like for me to be faithful in this situation? And so maybe for you this morning to be faithful as we look at those 19,000 children that die, say, for me to be faithful, I need to go and look at these children and, and maybe sponsor one. Maybe that's my faithful response. Uh, in order to, to care for that child. Now, another fairness issue I think here is that I look at all the, the kids that are there. Is it fair to pick just one child when all of them need to be sponsored? You know, you could say, well, I, since I can't sponsor all of them, I won't sponsor any of them. That's the fair thing to do. No, don't ask what's fair. Ask what's faithful. Is it faithful for you to take one of those children and sponsor them? Maybe what's faithful for you right now is to not take a child because you're not able to do that at this time. Or maybe for you what's faithful is taking three or four of them and sponsoring three or four of them. I don't know what it is. It, it's up to you to not ask what is fair for me to do, but what is the faithful thing for me to do given this situation that I'm in, whether it's unfair or whether it, it's fair. God is calling us to, to change the way we look at things and not ask what's fair, but what is faithful. How can I be faithful in the midst of this situation uh, that I find myself in? And, and I would kind of re love to reword uh, how Jesus was sharing here in this passage and, and just change it a, a little bit he said, you were told uh, to, to love those, or to care for those that you love and to hate your enemies. He's saying, you've been told to be fair. That's what you've been taught. You've been taught and you've learned that things should be fair, that everyone should be treated the same or people should get what they deserve. You've been taught uh, to be fair. But I tell you to be unfair. I'm going to teach you to be different than what everyone else is doing because everyone else is trying to be fair. Um, he said the tax collectors, the pagans, they're trying to be fair. I want you to be unfair. I want you to give everybody more than they deserve. I want you to give everyone more than they deserve. Because as I look at, at God and I ask God, why aren't you fair? I'm reminded God is not fair. And I don't want God to be fair. Because if God were fair, God would call me to pay the price for my sins. Wouldn't he? If he's fair, then I should pay the price for the mistakes I've made. I should be the one condemned to death. I should be the one separated from him because of the sins in my life. If God were fair. But God's not fair. He said, you did this, but my son is going to pay the price for you. And so he unfairly sent his son Jesus to the cross for me and for you. And he did that so that I could have a relationship with him. That's not fair, but God's not concerned about fair. He's concerned about faithful. And he said he would be faithful to us. And so he forgave us of our sins. He gave us more than we deserve because we don't deserve that forgiveness or grace. He's given us more than we deserve. And he says, so if you're going to be a follower of mine, don't strive for fairness. Don't strive for things that are, are fair. And I want you to be perfectly unfair, like your heavenly father is perfectly unfair, giving you so much more than you deserve. And now as followers of Christ, we're called to give everybody else around us more than they deserve. Not just those that we love, but we are called to give them that. But also those that maybe we don't get along with, those that annoy us, uh, those that bug us. Uh, everyone were to give them more than they deserve because we've received more of God's love and grace than we deserve. And so don't worry about fairness. When that question starts creeping up in your mind, uh, unfair things are going to happen all the time. Let's say, God, what's faithful for me to do in this situation? What kind of grace, what kind of love, uh, what kind of forgiveness do I need to offer? That's more than this other person deserves because they've treated me unfairly, uh, but it's what my Heavenly Father wants me to do. And that's whose likeness I'm trying to live out as I go through this world. Uh, so I want to challenge you, I want to encourage you to think about not what's fair, uh, but what is faithful. And will you be like your heavenly Father and give others more than they deserve? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you uh, that you can change our perspective, that you can change the, the way that we look at this world instead of trying to find fairness in, in a world that uh, is so unfair, that instead we might look at how we can be faithful how we can follow the example that you gave as you gave your son for us, a gift we didn't deserve, and yet you gave it to us. Help us, Lord, not to just uh, give what others deserve back to them, but give more than they deserve because of the love and the grace that we have received. Help us to offer that to those who are around us. Uh, we pray this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.